the recording ever for real starts. We'll get started. Well, it started on Evan's screen. Oh, started on mine. All right. So remember, Chase lied. Well, he didn't. He went along with the lie. His old friends don't like him. His dad's a major jerk. He's back on the football team. I don't know. This is hot mess. Hot mess express. We are on chapter 23, page 184. At football practice, every when everybody else is laboring under a ton of equipment and you're breezing through drills and shorts and a t-shirt, you're not the most popular guy in the field. All around me, the grid iron resounds with crunching tackles, oofs, and grunts of pain, but I'm immune to that. No contact for the first week of my comeback. Middle school rules. My teammates managed to see it, that I suffered just the same. Around the Gatorade bucket, no drink in my hand makes it as far as my mouth. It's pretty clear that other players have determined that I'm not going to get so much as a sip as long as my special treatments hold up. Every time I've got a full cup, someone manages to jostle my elbow until the content spilled down my leg and into my cleats. It's been going on for three days now. I'm borderline dehydrated, and when I walk, my wet pants creak sloshy noises. Hey, Pink, Coach Davenport calls, referring to the fruit punch color of my lower body. Get out there and catch some passes. I have no memory of what practice is supposed to be like, but I don't complain about the treatment, and I focus on doing my job. I guess playing football is like riding a bike. You never really forget how. I run hard. After a couple days, the cuts, the jukes come back to me. More muscle memory. And I make a few good grabs, and I can feel the guy's attitudes thawing a little. Nice catch, Captain Landon tells me with a slap where my shoulder pad would be if I was wearing one. I guess I'm still the captain. I don't forfeit that by having amnesia. Yeah, good to have you back, adds Joey in a tone that could almost be interpreted as friendly. I tried to turn this development to my advantage. Can I have a drink now? He laughs. Bathroom's in the field house, newbie. I hadn't thought of that. Pretty soon I'm in there, bent over the sink, guzzling water from the tap. It's better than drinking out of the toilet, which is probably what Joey had in mind. It takes a while, but Landon finally explains that this is a standard procedure for anyone who's on no contact. As soon as I can get in tackled like everybody else, my Gatorade privileges will be restored. Football. Here's a surprise. I like it. That means everything I didn't change when I fell on my head. It proves that you can be an athlete and a video kid at the same time. Not in my case, obviously. Video club invited me to get lost. But it's possible to be both. I have no idea why more people don't do it. Maybe it's because the jocks will never find out if they enjoy doing something artsy because they never try it. And the arts kids feel the same way about sports. In spite of everything that's happened, I'm getting the hang of most of the hurricanes. They're a rowdy crew, and sometimes the physical nature of the game spills over into the way they treat other kids, which is definitely not right. But they're giving me a chance, which is more than I can say for the video club these days. I'm starting to see how I could have been friends with the players with two exceptions. Aaron and Bear finally have what they wanted, my name in the mud with my new friends and I'm back on the team. But if they expect us to be the three musketeers again, they can forget it. They couldn't stand to see me making a life for myself that doesn't include them, so they wrecked it for me. And in the process, they managed to retarget poor Joel who hasn't been home for two weeks yet. And that's not including the way they treat the residents at Portland Street. But the last straw was when they cornered me so I had no choice but to lie to Dr. Fitzwallis to protect the three of us. Aaron's always lecturing me about friendship. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. I don't talk to them. I don't stretch next to them. In the locker room, I sit as far away from them that I'm practically out in the hall. When we're on the practice field for the same drill, they got no chatter for me, not even eye contact. The other Hurricanes have started to notice, but they think it's funny. Aaron and Baird don't. And how much do I care about hurting their delicate feelings? Well, you can fit that inside the nucleus of a carbon atom. On Friday, Coach Davenport runs us through a quick workout. The Hurricanes have a night game tomorrow, and he wants everybody fresh and sharp. Since I won't be playing, he keeps me out on the field while the others clatter into the locker room. Ten laps, Pink, he calls. No dodging it. The other kids are laughing at me and calling out mock encouragement. They were benched for my week with no pads. To show off, I kick it into high gear and spring down the sideline. One thing that comes out of my first week of practice, I've gotten really fast. None of my teammates are very impressed because apparently I was always this fast, but it's news to me. And these days, I need something to make me feel good about myself. When the tackle comes, it's complete shock. 
One second, I'm running free, and the next, a big body hits me just below the knees, knocking my legs out from under me, sending me hurtling forward. I must somersault because I see a quick panorama of the sky and grass. The earth comes to a clobber me. I think I eat some of it. Gasping, I roll over. A helmet figure is blocking out the sun. Number 57. Bear. Aaron stands up wide him, applauding. How's that for no contact? Bear spits. I don't answer. I can't. The wind is totally knocked out of me. I just lie there wheezing. Oops. He goes on. Fake apology. I think that might have been contact. It's so confusing with you lately, Ambrose. You're a friend. You're an enemy. You're a teammate. You're a video dork. You've got amnesia. He grabs me by the fabric of my t-shirt and hurls me to my feet. Or maybe you remember more than you let on. I've got no pads on, I choke, finding breath at last. You want to kill me? It could happen, you know, and you'd get more community service for that. We had to get your attention, man, Aaron informs me solemnly. You barely said a word to us all week. Don't worry, we won't ha harm a hair on your little head, Bear adds, until we get square. Get square? I don't know if I've ever been so mad. Aren't we square yet? All my friends hate my guts because they think I set up what happened in the band room. Aaron grins. It wasn't too hard to convince them either. I guess we're not the only ones who figured out the new Chase is a phony. What are you talking about, I sputter. You never had amnesia, Bear accuses harshly. You faked the whole thing. Are you crazy, I demand. What's so fantastic about forgetting your whole life that nobody would fake it? I didn't even know my own mother. Well, for one thing, Bear returns readily. You can act like you have no clue what you owe us. I owe you nothing, I seize. The fact that I used to be friends with you guys makes me sick. If you think you can push me around the way you do everybody else, think again. There's still enough of the old chase left to take you on. You're lucky I don't go straight to the cops and wrap you out for swiping Mr. Solway's medal. They stare at me surprised. I can feel the advantage shifting to me so I don't let up. You geniuses. I figured that out by watching you prowling the Robin the halls at Portland Street, taking advantage of the people you're supposed to be helping. Give me credit for having the brains to see who's sleazy enough to steal from a war hero who's too frail to look after his stuff. Bear is still sail staring and slowly understanding is dawning on Aaron. You, you really do have amnesia, he tells me. Yeah, so? So don't you remember? We didn't jack the metal. You did. Oh, snap. So Chase was the original person that stole the medal. But of course, he doesn't remember it. Because remember, old Chase. Nah, nah. Rage floods through me, and I rear back my fist to take a swing at him. Before I can act through, the memory flashes in my brain. The triangle case on the dresser flipped open to reveal the gleaming five-point medal of honor at the end with a blue star-spangled ribbon. A hand reaches down. My hand. I'm totally appalled, yet it makes perfect sense. Aaron and Bear are the worst people I know, but they weren't always a twosome. They had a ringleader, Chase Ambrose. And in those days, if they were low, he was lower. Even before the memory returned, I should have known I did it. Bear's words break into my horrid thoughts. That's right, Boy Scout, this one's on you. You didn't even wait till the old Dumbledore was out of the room. As soon as his back was turned, you snatched it and tossed the case in the closet. It's worth big money, and you us owe us our share. Three-way split, that was our deal, Aaron confirms. If we get sentenced to Greybeard Motel, at least we were going to get something out of it. I, I don't have it. Aaron brows dark and don't land, man. I saw you jamming in your pocket. What kind of... I all but whisper. I mean, I might have it, but I don't know what I did with it. And if I did find it, it's going back to Mr. Solway. Maybe I used to be a crook, but I'm not anymore. Aaron stepped forwards. Fine. You're better than us now. You're a saint. But when you took that medal, that was the old you and the old rule. So it belongs to all three of us. You can't do anything without our okay. And we don't give it. He looks totally serious like a lawyer reading a contract. You uh, make a move without us, you'll regret it, Bear adds threateningly. I regret I ever met you guys, I snort, hoarse with emotion. I wheel away from them and flee for home, not even stepping into the locker room to shower and change. I have to, to put some distance. I have to put as much distance as possible between myself and those two. As I run, hot tears of shame are streaming down my face. Since my accident, I've heard a lot about the person I used to be. Never did I imagine this. I sprint harder, accelerating on the sidewalk, outpacing even the most intense drills from practice. It's no problem escaping Aaron and Bear but I'll never be able to get away from myself. Oh my God.
Oh, see, doesn't that just like hurt your heart? Like he wants to be such a good person now, but the old him just was not that great of a person. And now he knows like, oh my gosh, like how, how's he gonna get, he has no memory. He doesn't know where the metal is. What if he did sell it? What if he buried it? What if he lost it? Like we literally have no clue because he has no clue. Chapter 24, Brendan Espinazo. Kimberly's gone. I don't mean she's dead or anything dressed like that. She hasn't even moved away. Just gone from my life. That time in the music room when she cared enough to help me out of the tuba when I was too slick with fire extinguishing foam to get any traction, I really believe that I was starting to make some progress with her. But it turns out that was wishful thinking. In the end, she was just hanging around to be close to Chase. Now that he is kicked out, she stopped coming to meetings. From an artistic standpoint, that's probably a good thing. Now she's back supporting the football team since Chase is on it again. She even watches practice sitting in the stands her homework binder propped open in her lap. It makes me sad because that's the same thing she did in video club. These days, the closest thing I'll ever get to her is what happened is when we happen to pass in the halls and she looks like she's trying to remember where she knows me from. You'd think all that would make me really jealous of Chase. And it does, sort of. But the truth is, I probably miss Chase even more than I miss Kimberly. Video club is useless without him. We might as well change the name to club because the creativity level in the room is basically zero. The others notice it's two. It's pretty obvious when Mr. Lowe asks who's got footage to screen and nobody has squat. Even though our club is gritting to a halt, I have no sympathy for those guys. I can't get any of them to even consider the possibility that Chase might be innocent. Or maybe they're right and I'm the moron. Chase didn't hesitate to lie about what happened in the music room and blame everything on an electric file. Whatever he did or didn't do to Joel in the one-man band, he was just as bad as the Neanderthal pals in that way. But he was our friend. I refuse to believe that he's faking that. He was a good club member, maybe the best. He worked shoulder to shoulder with Shoshana on Warrior, which is the greatest thing we ever produced. She should have at least taken the time to listen to his side of the story, if there is such a thing. Anyway, she didn't, and neither did Hugo or Marcia or Baron or me. We were fine to benefit from his talents when he was with us, but we never really believed that he wasn't the Chase Ambrose we used to know. At the first time something went wrong, we dropped him like a hot potato. The whole thing depresses me to the point where I almost want to quit video club, but I'm the president. If I leave, it'll fall apart. No. It's up to me to jumpstart my fellow videoites, even though they don't deserve it. I'm going to make a video, any video, just to get the creative juices flowing again. Unfortunately, I have zero ideas. That's how black this chase business has made everybody. So I take a walk up and down the street just for a change of scenery, and I see it. There's a big, fat slug that's been climbing the stucco side of our house for the past day and a half. He's not making a heck of a lot of progress. He's only a third of the way up after all that time, which means... He's averaging, by my calculations, like 15 feet per week. But you have to admire the little guy's spirit. He's absolutely determined to get where he's going, which is the roof, I guess. I don't know what's up there for him. That's his problem, not mine. I decide to film his journey, inch by inch, up the side, defying gravity. I call it Slugfest, or maybe something lofty and inspirational like The Ascent. Then, in editing, I can add in commentary like he's pushing for the summit of Everest or maybe play-by-play -play from the Indy 500. That could be kind of funny, sportscasting raving about speed and acceleration and afterburners while he's millimeters along. Okay, it's no leaf, man, but hopefully it will get the video club going again. All right, so he's going to film a slug. Just, you know, slowly moving up. Anything, because he basically has no ideas. I take the flip cam out of my bag. I always bring one home in case inspiration strikes. I mount it on my tripod. That way I can shoot hours of video without having to cool my heels watching nothing happen. Outside, I arrange the whole setup on our sidewalk with the camera pointing up to the slug in dead center of the frame. It's not like he's going to zoom out of the picture anytime soon. Not unless someone straps a tiny booster rocket onto his butt or whatever slugs have back there. I press the record button and nothing happens. No pulsing green light to indicate filming. Weird. We recharge the camera batteries every day. I try again. Still nothing. That's when I notice the message flashing on the video finder. Memory full. That's impossible. Club rules say you have to download your footage on a computer or a memory stick so we can wipe the camera for the next user. Mr. Lowe is a real tyrant about it. How did this one get missed? And is the memory full? What's on it? I press the play button. The first thing I hear of the flip cam's tiny speaker is a high octane full orchestra rendition of For He's a Jolly Good Fellow. Then I see myself in a dark suit and a bow tie with band risers in front of the green screen. 
I'm on a chair with a clarinet in my hands, pretending to play along with the fast paced music. As I watch Transfix, clarinet Brendan disappears to be replaced in a jump cut by another version of myself sitting in the same chair a few feet away. This time I got a violin and I'm fiddling like a mad furious time with the song. That goes on for a little while. And then just as I suddenly, I sit on the drums at the high risers, my arms just a blur. It hits me. This is one man band. I must have started the camera in all of the excitement and never switched it off. Come to think of it, I never turned in the camera that afternoon. Kimberly did it for me while I was in the bathroom trying to clean up my suit, which was hemorrhaging shoe polish all over the school. And Kimberly being Kimberly, she didn't know the rule about wiping the memory. She just put the camera back on the shelf. Amazing. I thought one man band was gone forever. And here it is on the flip cam, ready to be cut into my greatest video ever. So that's exciting. His video wasn't lost. Obviously, I won't be able to use the tuba part because that's when we got attacked and the whole shoot gets busted, got busted up. After that, my band can't feature a tuba player who gets slimed with foam and trapped in his own instrument. But the rest of it, breathlessly, I fast forward. It's all okay. Better than okay. It could be my first YouTube video to hit the big time. I scan right to the end. It's all there. Aaron and Bear raiding the shoot. Kimberly running out to get Chase. And finally, the tug of war between him and Bear with the fire extinguisher. Even over the loud music, I can actually hear the whack of the heavy metal crashing, casing smashes Joel in the eye. I wince a little like that. No wonder half the poor guy's face is black and blue. That had to hurt. I bet it still does. Also, this is important. No smoke, no fire. No reason to fill the room with foam. Not that I ever took that story seriously, since it's nice to have art evidence. Evidence. I'm so wrapped up in living that it takes a few seconds to realize that I'm looking at something monumentally important. All that craziness in the music room happened so fast that it was impossible to process it. But here's a visual record that I can watch over and over to catch every detail. So I back up the clip to the moment Chase burst into the scene and run it in slow-mo. He looks shocked. If he had planned this, he has got to be the greatest actor in the world. When Bear hands him the fire extinguisher, he takes it, but he just stands there holding it as if he has no idea what to do or why he has it. He never fires it or even holds it upright, and it looks like he's in a daze until Bear tries to grab the thing back. Then Chase wakes up, and the struggle is on to keep it away from Bear. And when he pulls it free, he swings back and hits Joel. Pure accident. Maybe afterward, he helped Aaron and Bear cover up what they did, but the video proves that Chase was trying to stop the attack, not join in. See, look, it's good for something that they're always videoing their lives. I'm practically bursting out of my skin with excitement. I want to run in 15 different directions to speed the world, to spread the word far and wide. Who should I tell first? Chase, Mr. Lowe, Ms. Dr. Fitzwallis? It's more than just a video club. It's about justice. And don't forget Joel himself. He shouldn't be allowed to go on thinking that Chase still has it out for him. And to Shauna. She's a nice person and a great videoite, but let's face it. Right now, she'd burn church at this chase at the stake if she thought she could get away with it she needs to know what really happened all the video whites do i frowned it's the weekend none of us will be at school until monday this has to be done right the school can wait but the video club should see the footage it's more than just evidence it'll be nothing less than a demonstration of the moving image to change hearts and minds who better than the president of the video club to make it happen i take out my phone and compose a text to chase to shauna and joel Urgent, come to my house at 10 a.m. tomorrow. There's something important you have to see. P.S. I'm not trying to rope you into helping with another YouTube video. Soon after the agonizing soul searching, I send the same text to Kimberly, but I add the line and say, P.S. Chase is going to be there. Okay, I want to see her again. Sue me. Haha. Uh -huh. So silly. All right. Five second talk. We are. Um, I assigned a read works yesterday that is due Thursday. It is your final read works of the nine weeks, which is exciting that you need to do good because it's your final one. So we still have nine minutes left in class for you to work on your read works. Tomorrow, we will read another two pages or another two chapters. Thursday, another. So we should have this done by Friday. So right now you're gonna work on your read works or read for AR. I will see you guys all later. Bye-bye.